We've been trying to do this episode for a minute now, so um, let's kick off the list, you know, with 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 uh, with our guests today. So, Joe, you know, we, we asked everyone to make a list of of whatever, just like ten topics, man, shit that shit that you're passionate about. Whether you hate something currently, you love something. Uh, so, give me one thing. All right, my first one. Uh, I'm gonna do Time Warp, that document, the three part documentary up on uh, Tubi. Um, Three parts. First one, Midnight Madness. The second one, Horror. And the third one, Comedy, I believe. Um, sick doc. I mean, just scrolling through Tubi one day, popped up, jumped on. I watched three at once. It was basically like everything that this podcast like loves. Like, yeah. Saying, uh, you know, all interviews were like, it wasn't even, there weren't louches either. It was tons of great guests. I watched maybe twice since then it dropped maybe a month ago it was dope yeah 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 you know the the thing with 2b tv is i mean maybe we'll get a sponsor one day but it, it's, really, so. it's really it's <laughs> really it's really like the gift that keeps on giving it's one of those things that when people are like oh i don't even know what that is or i don't have it i'm like it's it's a free app you just download into your smart tv or whatever and it's just something like that that pops out uh, but it, it really is like the 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 movie section rejects that we all loved, uh, but haven't the films seen. that time forgot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I like it to like walking into an old school mop hop video store. Yeah, especially with the horror section, it's like holy crap! Like I haven't seen her. Savage Streets is here. I haven't seen her yeah. horror movie. Yeah. Whoa, head Pretty of the good. head of the family is on here. Jesus. The horror and exploit. <laughs> The exploitation stuff is superb yeah. on there. Old stand-up oh. specials too, like uh, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's it's probably my favorite streaming service. It's 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 a, <laughs> the the streaming service that I go to when I can't think of anything else that I want to watch on everything else. Yeah, so exactly. sometimes because like the other day, like uh, what Friday night, I put on Slither, which I've mm-hmm. seen a hundred times, but it's like okay, I'm gonna watch fucking Slither now because it's a fucking masterpiece. So uh, Langan, give me some. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go with, um, Deaf Heaven's new, uh, single, Great Mass of Color. Um, they actually put out another one, I think called The Gnashing, I think last week, but I haven't listened to it as much, but, uh, this band, I, I, I always liked the band, fucking hated the singer. I, I don't, I don't like high pitch squealy scream shit. I like, if you're going to scream, I like it guttural and low, like Frank from Suffocation. But, um, this, they kind of, they kind of are like a straight shoegaze act almost on this. It's uh, more in the vein of straight My Bloody Valentine or something to that effect. Am I echoing on here? You are. You are. Good. Good. Hey, microphone. I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, I will figure it out. It's fine. You're off now. Sure. You muted yourself. This episode's just like this episode's be, cursed. It's not meant cursed. to be, man. <laughs> oh, oh anyway, no! It is meant great. to be. Shout out to Conor McGregor's leg, though. <laughs> it's, it's a great single. It's awesome. If you, a lot of people don't like Deaf Heaven for the same reason that I mentioned, but this is this is great. It's nice and clean yeah our guitar player just sent it to me recently he is like check it out because he knows that i don't like the same thing i i didn't like the stuff that that that, uh that shit made uh you know the the, their earlier records so he's like you would probably like this i gotta check it out so um i guess i'm gonna go uh you know the movie oxygen did anyone else have that on the list or not no yeah. Okay, so Oxygen is a, a movie uh, by Alexandra Aja. Uh, it's currently up on Netflix, and it's uh, it's like this one setting. This girl wakes up in a cryogenic tank. Uh, ooh, like uh, 
cryogenic. Uh, I forget what they describe it. And uh, it's almost like Saw. Like, you know, when when they wake up in the movie and they, they're trying to figure out how they got there and it's this one setting. So the same thing with this movie. And it's it's one of the best movies I've seen this year. It's up on Netflix now, which is easy to, you know, I feel like everyone has Netflix. And goddamn, when I tell you, you know, you, you always think to yourself, like, how could this movie be entertaining for like an hour and 40 minutes from beginning to end to basically just the reveal, everything about it, I 100% thumbs up. Absolutely, absolute masterpiece. One of the best movies of the year. So, Parker. I watched uh, both of those Fear Streets on Netflix. So it's 1984, 1978. I didn't read any of these books. So I just kind of went in there blindly. And uh, they were pretty good, I got to say. Pretty brutal kills. I mean, the one that I watched last night just premiered the 1978 one. As far as music, pretty much the soundtrack was like, it came the songs from Anchorman and Days of Confused. That's what the music was for the 78 one. The one from uh, from the 90s, I'm sorry, it was 90s, not 84, it was 94. It was like Nirvana, Radiohead, stuff like that. But um, it was a poor book, but I thought it was going to be you know, like these, you know, teenage books, you know. So I watched both of those. Those were, those were pretty good on Netflix. Yeah, that's pretty good. I uh, I started watching the first 20 minutes and then I had to leave to go play the show. And what I what I realized was... Um, um, you know, fear, fear of the dark by Iron Maiden, le- leading into like Portis Head. I was just like, "Whoa!" I'm like, "This is crazy. What's going on here? Like, what yeah. kind of soundtrack is this?" So, uh, very, very scream like in the first 20 minutes. Which, I mean, at this point, you know, like I think we had this discussion. I had a discussion with someone where it's just like enough time has passed. Like, Scream came out 25 years ago, so you know, uh, people that are watching this probably have no idea they're like oh yeah this old movie scream so um <laughs> joe give me something um i'm gonna go with number two uh the new modest mouse baby so good so good here hiatus last time they released the record was like 2015 i had a chance to work their um their record released i did the two nights at webster hall i may or may not have indulged in some um Herbal activities with one of the band members, which was super yeah. cool because the band is learning from true. I tried not to fade away too hard, but I definitely probably creeped them out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. First record, six years, man. Could like could not be more psyched on it. Like it's all I listened to lately. Like really, um, I don't know, man. I get into like serious, like 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 that one record that like you just you just always put on like you know oh i don't know what to listen to all right it's my wake it's my go to bed it's midday it's dude it's a perfect record uh and that's not just me being a super fanboy i know it comes off that way but they deliver they 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 put out a great record i'm trying to go to one of them brooklyn steel shows um we'll see but yeah man what well, so is is it is it just the two guys now I th- it's still Jeremiah, Isaac, like there's 10 new members that like kind of come and go. I know Dan from but Murder it, City Devils isn't in the band anymore. But it's just, uh, the, it's Eric. like the two main guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Yeah, he's, br- I mean, he's brilliant. Like, I, I love all that. I celebrate the whole catalog. Yeah, uh, man. You celebrate. I love, I, love, I, love Casanova. I love all, like, I don't really, I honestly don't think there's one bad record that they put out. Some are better than others. Their last record, you know, you know, decent, like not their best. But they're still like the good songs are, you know. Yeah. When, when you, when you're into a band, you could celebrate the whole catalog. And, and uh, when you're into a band as much as you're into Modest Mouse, it's like for me, it's like Alkaline Trio. It's like you could, um, I don't think they've ever put out a bad record, but of course, there's some records that are better than others. But Speaking I don't think, of, yeah. Um, there, um, now that Mark Hoppus has like announced the cancer thing, Tom DeLong, I think they've been hitting it like a possible reunion with Tom DeLong. You think Matt Skiba is still going to be involved, or you think he's going to step back if, if and when Tom DeLong returns? I, to be honest with you, I, I don't really know. I still can't even like uh, accept the fact that he's in that band. Uh, yeah. but those songs and those records are so like. Anytime I try to listen to Matt Skiba and Blink-182, I, it's almost offensive to my ears. Like, it, I can't. It just, I, I get it. I get, Listen, if, if someone's like, you want to be in Blink-182, I'd be like, 
fuck yeah like i don't care like oh you, you guys hate this record whatever i'm here playing you know like some like airline arena <laughs> yeah. Steady uh, yeah yeah for sure and those people like as much as i as we think alkaline Tri trio is a big band then you get to blink 182 which is like on a whole nother scale of like reality sure um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I hope he just sticks with Alkaline and I hope he got his taste of, of whatever they were doing. And I hope Mark and, and that other guy, Tom, go back and they do their fucking Blink-182 thing. So. Yeah. But uh, Langan, give me some. Um, a sketch comedy series on Netflix. I love the first season. They just came out with season two. I think you, I think you should leave. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tim Robinson. Yeah. It's... Uh, real absurdist if you're fans of like uh like a tim and eric style kind of sketch comedy that's not going to make a lot of sense but just be completely Funny. absurd it's got uh great cameos bob odenkirk's in it tim tim heidecker's in it patty harrison's in it there's a whole bunch of people that, that they're like 20 minute episodes too i think it was only six episodes they put out but um if you like absurdist sketch comedy, it's it's fantastic. It's one of the better ones I've seen in recently. Yeah, I, w I watched one of those episodes yesterday with like the coffin and like the hot dog eating. <laughs> yeah, the so, coffin was great. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so I'm going to talk about um, the Halloween Kills trailer. Anybody else have that? Mm. No, no. Nope. Okay. No, shoot on that, man. I just, I'm psyched. So, um, you know, it's it's funny how people just can't love something. You know, just Cuts. the amount of like, like people like watch. First of all, the movie was supposed to be released last year. It did not get released last year. So at this point, you just gave me a two and a half minute trailer. I'm like basically snorting lines of that trailer. Like to me, I'm <laughs> like some people watch that trailer and they're like, oh, my God, they gave away so too much. I'm thinking like what? Like that, that Michael Myers is a killer. Did he escape the house? There was did a house fire. That he's gonna go Ruined kill, it. yeah. Like, what the fuck are you? What did they give away? I don't. Because people even... just want to complain no matter what, man. Yeah. It's like it's just so many. For everything good about social media, I meet met you guys. We started the show. There's that. Just like I gotta complain about some shit. It's so off putting. Like here we are, like drowning in content. Like we're we're having shows about content basically, uh, and they give us this 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 trailer for this movie, and the trailer is so good. And it's just like I, I sometimes I click on the comments just to see it's just and I'm thinking like, what about this is bad? It's like the eighth or ninth movie, not more. It's like the 12th movie in a franchise. And it looks so good. It's just yeah. just be like, oh, this is cool. Like my like, wh what are they giving away? Uh, but the trailer looks awesome. I obviously I like uh, the beginning, you know, being that the fireman saved him and all that other shit. Like, I like that concept. I'm like, oh, cool. And then now he's like coming back and you know that there's a third one. Halloween ends. So it's like <laughs> this this one might be the Empire Strikes Back, you know, so it's like he's just like he's going to get the one up on this one. You can put a Halloween movie out every October up there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, did I might like some better than others, but I'm going to always check it out. Yeah, I did it for Saw, you know, so uh, Parker. All right. So um, I just watched this last night on HBO Max and uh, I fucking really dug this movie. It was called The Hunt. Anybody ever see this movie? I did. No. I thought it was a cool concept. Right. Okay. A nice flip. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm watching this thing and I'm like, man, I'm like, this this really reminds me of something. So, of course, I had to get the physical version out. And I, like, I knew exactly, it. I knew it. This is exactly I'm like, why do I like this movie so much? Because it reminds me of surviving. Yeah. The That's why. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. this movie is about, you know, a bunch of people wake up on a plane and uh, they have no clue why they're there. They get dropped on this uh, at this destination with a box full of weapons and uh they start to get hunted and uh, pretty much the basis of the whole movie is now they got to find out who's hunting them why are they hunting them but it's one of those movies where the whole town is involved you can't trust ever you know anything everything's booby trapped everything's poisoned but talk about a fucking for an hour and a half i was fucking all in on this movie yeah it's it's fun it's it's a really uh and that was the movie i don't know if you remember that they had that controversy where um because they were using the word deplorables and like yeah, yeah. it's got a heavy political subtext yeah. not yeah. even yep. subtext it's pretty much right in front of you but uh but yeah. on, on the flip yeah on the on the flip so but yeah, yeah that, that's exactly. a good one at hbo max and like 
you know, they added, uh, you know, uh, uh, Return of the Living Dead 3, the unrated version. So if you guys want to refresh, please do that. So, I watched that recently before we had. Uh, oh, before we had Yuzna on. So, yeah. 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 Uh, all right. Solomon, give me a third one. Uh, my third one is going to be a movie called Gutterbug on Amazon Prime. Yeah, you tell me about uh, this one. It's um, so uh, uh, it's like a crust, a homeless crust punk kid decides he wants to kill himself, and then he meets a girl, and uh, it's kind of just they they just they just bum around Boston. Uh, very intense, great soundtrack. Um, it's uh, this, it's kind of an indie. I, I don't really know too much about the main actor. I know the the director Andrew Gibson. He did uh, he was involved in Queer History and American Hustle in some form or another. I forgot. I think he was like a scouting location manager. I forgot what he was, but definitely a sick movie. Um, caught me by surprise. I reading like uh, reading the the you know the little the little blurb. It said crust punk, and I was you know automatically intrigued. <laughs> like. But it's a solid movie, and uh, it's, it's I feel like it's criminally underrated. I don't hear anyone ever talking about it. Like You're you know, the only it's one. you told me. Yeah, it's, it's pre- pretty dope. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's for the people that listen to this podcast for sure. Definitely a hit. Like anybody Amazon. that I told movie about, they loved it. Amazon Prime for sure. Um, Great. Um, I, um, I watched Mean Man: The Story of Chris Holmes on uh, amazon prime uh we me and sam talk about chris holmes too more frequently than most probably but uh ever since his legendary scene and decline of western civilization too but um you know he he was a well-known guitar player in the era not like some virtuoso of a randy rhodes caliber or something like that but he he had his own style very aggressive um and you know he had a whole image and uh, I never knew much about him personally, but he seems like an okay guy. Just, you know, a bit of a mess. He can't sing for shit. I don't know. He should probably get a singer with that band. Yeah. But, um, you know, telling the old stories about Wasp, Blackie Lawless sounds like a real asshole. Then from what other stories I've heard, he's probably, it's probably true. Um, but I don't know. It, I'm surprised. Like, uh, mo- he hasn't been on cameos and in, in bigger in bands that are established doing things that bring an old school guy in for a cameo because he still can play. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's an odd story. Is he ends up in pa- you know this American exile in Paris, basically? But uh, I'm always fascinated by Chris Holmes. Yeah. He, I, uh, I, apparently, apparently, that was pool water. Primero Blue Spears came. A couple of years ago, and she's like, "Yeah, that was pool water." Chris Holmes wasn't really good vodka like that. They they bring that up, but they never fully like. He doesn't really answer it, and somebody yeah. else doesn't really answer it. I think they like the whole, you know, war, war of it, you know. But um, it's good. It's worth a watch if you like eighties hair band shit, you know. For sure, you know the the one thing about him that I, that I'm gonna say, um, at, Langan, can you do me a favor just to try this out? Can you just mute yourself when you're not talking? Because I want to sure. see if that's where the echo is coming from. Yep. All right. Um. So basically, uh, what I like about this guy, uh, it's kind of like the animal story, just not as uh touching. <laughs> you know. Uh. But you take away that pool scene in that in that documentary. Um. Does anyone care about Chris Holmes? No, not, really. not really. Not <laughs> really. Uh, you you could unmute yourself, Langan, because it's not that. I don't know where the echo's coming from. I could probably get it out, but uh, it's still an entertaining thing. I I watch it too. It's it's just uh, it's it's it, it, people like a good train wreck, and uh, I I don't know. Maybe if I cared about Wasp. You know, then it would be, but other than just watching the train wreck, it's like I love the first two Wasp records. That was pretty much it, though. Last Command was like that, and then it was all thrash for me, so I kind of checked out at that point. But uh, the first Wasp record and Last Command, I think, are really good records for the era, you know. But I always liked his playing. Now he's a pioneer in homeless metal. That's the new genre yeah. he created. So. Yeah, I mean, I can't get it. When he saw those pictures of him selling this Trans Am and it's all like gutted and ripped out. And yeah. uh, just, I don't know. I feel like he could just, he, he just, he should not be singing though. I don't know what, yeah. <laughs> what planet 
that yeah. was a good idea. Yo, like, he's terrible. Speaking of not singing, yesterday I went through this like YouTube hole and I, I was like watching the videos for the M3 festival that just happened. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I watched Stephen Riley's L.A. Guns, which is, uh, you know, he's the drummer of L.A. Guns. Uh, yeah, and one, because now there's two the LA guns. There's two LA guns. There's Phil right. and Tracy, uh, and then there's the the drummer and the fucking singer of this of of the drummer's band is so bad. They play Ooh. like, they, I I think they're in drop D and the songs just don't sound the same. So but like Vince Neil bad. No, no, no. <gasps> it, he's a good singer, but it's just like they they like when you hear like Never Enough, they're singing it monotone. Because he can't hit that. I'm thinking, like, at that point, why are you doing this? <laughs> you know? Yeah. You could like, ask that about a bunch of those acts, bro. <laughs> you know? But I guess they don't know nothing else, you know? But, uh, all right. So I'm going to go with uh, my next pick is going to be a movie that uh, is up on HBO Max. Kajillionaire. I thought Kajillionaire was fucking great. Um, it's a, it's a, it's one of these movies. What? What? Oh. Um, it's one of these movies that, that has a really cool plot. Um, it, it's a family of grifters. So it's like this m a mother and, 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 and husband, and they, they, they're total scam artists, and they bring up their, um, their daughter to be a scam artist, too. And it's just this weird, fucked up relationship that they have of constantly avoiding uh, bills, uh, constantly doing hustles, and it's their weird relationship. And... Uh, I don't know. It's it's a really good movie. It's called Kajillionaire. It's a good film. Yeah. Oh, you watched it, right? Yeah. It's so very good. Evan yeah. Rachel Wood is in it. Uh, the girl that I guess Marilyn Manson supposedly terrorized or something. I don't uh, know. Allegedly. <laughs> Alle allegedly. Yeah, for sure. Allegedly, supposedly. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, she's really good in it. Richard Jenkins, who's great in everything. Uh, I I can't recommend it more. It's it's such a it's such a unique movie that you watch um very like indie flick with um like listen we all love these horror movies we all love action movies but i i really love when i see a movie with a unique story and unique performances that you know shit that you don't normally get so kajillionaire big thumbs up parker black summer season two man holy yeah. shit so take, this fucking I'll take first that season was great uh yeah. you know <laughs> anybody watched it she uh, it's pretty much you know it's a zombie series and this girl is searching for her daughter finds the daughter in the end of the first season and now it's kind of like a continuation now it's the two of them together so it's all you know continuation of the story but uh very fast paced i mean it's running zombies which you know took me years to accept i always hated running zombies but then i finally just fucking was like you know what running zombies are better than no zombies i guess so i'll fucking take it <laughs> you know and, uh, <laughs> I, I really dig this fucking show. I mean, how they how they break it down to the chapters is really cool, and uh, kind of how they do everybody's different perspective. Like it kind of has like a little a little drizzle of Lost in it. That's I think that's why I really enjoy the show. It's, it's good. Definitely bleaker than Walking Dead. It's it's darker, bleaker. Yeah. It spend less time like uh, in this soap opery character development that Walking Dead does, and. Uh, a lot more action, I thought, you know. In uh, in the chapters, the chapters really uh it's almost like um like a reservoir dogs style hmm. zombie, you know, where it was a like story. That. Right? It's just kind of like chopped up and you watch it and, and you don't really ever get a chance to like settle into what's going on. So you never get bored because it's always like 10 minutes in and it's like, what the fuck's going on? And and the the action sequences are, are very well done. They're amazing. Um, yeah, it's just really good. Like when I you don't think... like running zombies either. I agree with you. You know why? Because it's like if no one would survive. No one there's, would. There's a billion yeah. of these things. You're dead, you know. So at least if they're like lumbering, you kind of got like a fighter's chance yeah. to like get to an open doorway or something. But that's that's why I never liked it. But that being aside, it's a great series. It's awesome. Yeah. And the thing with that is it's more of like this virus, you know, like the, the right. any, I associate those like running uh, zombies with with viruses, you know, like the 28 days later. Exactly. Um, so it's like people that are just lose, you know, their fucking mind. So great one. I love great that show. So, uh, Joe, give me some. Uh, wait, uh, before I hop into that, Parker, is your favorite genre or genre of horror zombies? Uh, I mean, my I guess it's zombies, but then like my favorite subgenre of horror is like heavy metal horror. I call it, which is like Black Roses and 
you know, shit like that. Yeah. Because I, I remember the remember the Paving the Way zine. You and Pasali had uh, a horror, a crap, I forgot what it was called, crappy horror reviews with uh, Brian P. and Mike. Uh, Mike yeah, Pernell, man. But, and it was, I think all five movies that you guys reviewed were zombie films. I think like, we drank like a 30-pack each that day and fucking got to work. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah. Yo, can we start that show again? Just like give Parker, <laughs> give Parker a thirty pack and have him not review any, a movie. Not anymore, my friend. Those oh. days are over now. So, God damn it, straight edge. Yeah, right. that's it, baby. I hit that one year mark. That shit's over with. All right, well, Congrats, we're, buddy. We're gonna have to wait. We're gonna have to wait. Uh, yeah. you know, we're gonna have to Joe. We'll, we'll in another we'll life, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we may we uh, missed that train. Yeah, that that was a Thursday tour for me. That was a. Joe, uh, so hope. yeah, so my uh, Vagrant Twenty Five. Um, I really kept up with it. I don't know. Um, I've heard the first episode, uh, pretty good. Great record label in the early two thousands. My only complaint is I feel like they're kind of writing a, a pretty, a pretty, a guy with a pretty prominent role in that building that record label. I kind of feel like they're writing him out for whatever reason. I don't know. Uh, Deweese, obviously, I'm talking about Reggie was like a major part of that. Like. Uh, bigger an explosion you know them saves the day the get up kids kind of um i don't I, again i only listened to the first episode so i really can't <clears throat> but still a solid listen um if you're a fan of that era uh at one point between like 2001 and 2000 whatever 2003 2004 you could like bigger records you could have missed like that was one of the record labels that like at the time you bought a record off there and it was you know chances are it was going to be banging yeah, for sure. And and I love the podcast, especially uh, growing up with that stuff. Those bands were like super formative um, yes. for me, you know, and uh, obviously we're big Get Up Kid fans. We're big uh, Reggie in the full effect. Obviously, did you do merch for Reggie? Uh, right? Yes, uh, I did uh, for about four. Uh, well, on and off for four years. Um, not like straightforward, but like we uh first time i was supposed to only do two weeks just to kind of fill in like and then uh midway we were on tour with hello goodbye a bunch of bands that like i i mean it just it was an odd pairing i guess hello goodbye were super big reggie fans so they brought him out but it was like at the at the very like at the very beginning of like that mall like pop punk kind of like pretty boy kind of feel like and uh, he's up there with a fuck with, with like the bass is a Slipknot and a bunch of metalheads playing, ah. you know, Blood and Blood. Like, so it was an odd pairing, but it was a lot of fun. And then, uh, you know, if you do a one off, I would, I would, I would, I would, uh, I would hop on. And then um, we did his farewell tour in like 08, which wasn't really his farewell tour. But uh, is it yeah, ever? Is it ever? I grew up. I grew up a big Reggie fan. Like, I loved Reggie. You know, I love Coalesce, obviously, Get Up Kids, but like, I, I, and I'm, it's going to be a little crazy, but I think Reggie in the full effects better than the Get Up Kids. You it's hear a it here first. Yeah, it's a little boring statement. It's kind of like uh, how I like Van Hagar better than I like. Uh, oh, oh Jesus. Man. You're tripping. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All of it, I'm with you on that. Y'all crazy. I'm with you on that. <laughs> yeah. That's why, but, that's, uh, why episode, that's why episode 100 fucking everybody's going to fucking dismiss me because I'm going to have so much shit to talk about anthrax. It's not even going to be funny. Oh, I got, I got them on deck. Uh, but w- I, real quick, what is the best part about doing merch on tour and what is the worst part? The worst part, uh, the travel kind of beat yourself up you don't really eat right you don't really sleep right you know i mean um you're just you're you're lag man you know you jump in time zones you know it's and that's just basically how it is even not merch just for any but like you know it's <clears throat> the band plays from you know for a half hour 45 minutes an hour each night but you're there all night you know you're dealing with drunk people and you're dealing with like snobby people and you're dealing with like people who don't know their size which is like the like the worst like my biggest pet peeve people come up like well, what do you think i should wear I'm like i don't yeah. know what the the the, yeah, look at the tag on the t-shirt yeah. that you're wearing right now and you tell me i'm not a, i'm not i'm not no you know i'm not yeah i don't know this fashion coordinator i don't know what the <laughs> hell size you're wearing that's some that's some married with children shit 
<laughs> Fat lady <laughs> walks into a store today. Yeah. The best part is the, the travel, seeing buds, you know, out, out of state. You know, you make make some good friendships. Um, Any pregnancies? <laughs> Any pregnancies? Uh, but perhaps. I don't know. I can't disclose that information at this time. There's a pending uh, lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's cool. about it, man. And then, <clears throat> you know, you, you meet you meet people, you get connects, and, you know. Cool, 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 cool. Um, yeah. Langan, give me something. Well, I'm going to go way back right here. This isn't brand new, obviously. But um, every Saturday night, I watch a movie with my son. Drag out a classic, quote unquote. That's cool. Expose him to the new stuff. We watch Big Trouble in Little China, the, the thing. Oh, nice. Everything. You know, we're doing everything. So it's summertime. Busted out Jaws. You know, nice. The whole series. Okay. Mm. And um, Even four? Obviously, the first one's a classic. Well, he wanted nice. to see four because I told him how to Which ending now? Should have came over. Right. I could have let you the other ending. You know? uh, what, yeah. Part four? Um, the shark explodes like everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know the different one. But uh, it's, I mean, has there ever been a franchise that, that no. nope. you know, gained itself further time and time? I mean, part two is watchable. It's okay. Part three is when it really shits the bed. Part four is just unexplainably bad. But, you know, uh, and it made me think, you know, about, like, I can't believe they haven't tried to reboot that yeah. series yeah. at all with all the stuff that they reboot. Like, they haven't updated Jaws. Not I that just, I'm saying they should, but, you know. I just feel like there's so many shark movies to begin with now that it's that's just like, true. you yeah. know, and, and, and a lot of good ones. But, like, the first movie is, like, arguably in the top 10 for mo best movies of all time amazing and then yeah, the amazing. three the three sequels are <laughs> arguably three of the worst sequels ever attached to a movie that's so beloved you know and then the cameo uh, police academy five come on tackle barry uh, had the gun yeah, to jaws his nose they just get absurd, down, absurdly like worse and worse, you know, the sea world thing in, in part three. And then part four, how the shark basically like they get on a plane and go to the Bahamas and a shark follows them from, you yeah. know, tra you know, trails them down, down to the warmer waters. Like yeah. it knows following their path light. Like it knew it bought, they bought tickets to get, cause it's got, it's out to get a family, this stupid animal, you know, that would not be able to do that. But, you know, and they, each one has the, the tropes of like, mm -hmm. I, I remember Bill Burr just talking about, you know, they always have a villain. They're like, we can't close this beach. We can't close this yeah. park. It's, it's the busiest it's, it's, time oh, of the year. <laughs> but that's how it is. Like in the eighties, there was yeah. always that one, like it's either like the police chief, there's mm -hmm. the may there's always someone who's like there's 30 dead bodies on the floor we need to do something about it no we don't we're not shutting down this parade we're gonna keep it's like wait what do you like every time it's always, always that or it's a construction <laughs> company that's got to tear down some local beloved place and put condos up or a shopping mall and everybody <laughs> like they love that 80s was like yeah. the, that was their wheelhouse but people, uh people like we got to break dance to make money yeah, but anyway, but it, it was fun to watch it with him. And Joy's one still holds up for the youth, I'm happy to say. But the rest of them are what they are. Obviously. What up? What up with youth? All right, cool. So, um, I'm gonna mention a TV show on Paramount Plus. I feel like Paramount Plus is one of those things like um, Cinemax at the moment, where I feel like I'm the only person who has it. So, uh, <laughs> Cinemax? No, Paramount that. Plus. Oh. Uh, yeah, I got it too. There's really it's if you like if you're a fan of TV show, the movies there's really not a great selection. No, but it's for this. It's like um from cradle to from the cradle to the stage. So uh, that was Dave Grohl and his mom. Like they wrote that. Uh, she wrote the book on kind of like what it was like to to uh, I guess like bring up someone who's as famous and popular of a rock star as Dave Grohl is. So then they invite. You know, the mom of like, uh, for in particular, let, let's go with Tom Morello. Tom, they do one, and you know, uh, Dave and Tom have their conversations, they drive around wherever the fuck they drive around, and then the moms talk. Uh, oh, wow. and there's six episodes that are like that, and it's like it's really well done, it's really entertaining. If you watch, if you have Paramount Plus and uh, you're looking for something to watch, I couldn't recommend it more, especially the Tom Morello episode because. His mom is such a G. Like his mom is like 97. And she's like, she, yo, she's like a G. 
Like she grew up in, in Illinois and she was like, fuck it, I'm out of here. And she went to like Nigeria, bang some fucking like prime minister and shit. And he was like, I'm going to stay here. And she's like, well, I'm going to bring my half black kid, Tom, back to Illinois. And then so that's how they grew up. Like, you know, it was just single mom. But she was such a G and she's like uh, cursing out like I, she's she's like gangster and, and unbelievably like an incredible person to watch and that that episode in particular but they also talked to Getty Lee and his mom um uh, uh, uh Belinda Carlisle uh a whole bunch of people uh, Pharrell Chris Holmes's yeah. mom yeah yo <laughs> wow why don't gonna... they do that <laughs> actually yeah that's uh, maybe they'll do that in season two so <laughs> huge thumbs up for that so Parker give me something uh album wise i checked out that go ahead and die which is max cavalera's new uh project with his kid so this is uh this is kind of like when you get enough of that latest enforced album and you still want a little bit more check this out because this is, this is right in the same uh same vein of it so it's uh it's a three-piece band max is uh he's singing playing guitar and actually his son which he named igor after his brother igor cavalera plays drums but uh it's very fast thrash. I think, you know, the songs are around like two and a half, three minutes long. And, uh, you know, I mean, this, this guy might be in more bands than you, Sam, Max Cavalera. This might be the, you know, the only guy going that's in more bands. I mean, he's still doing Soulfly. He's still doing Kill or Be Killed. And then I guess he had enough time to put this out. So go ahead and die, it's called. He's doing every band but Sepultura. Good for him. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, one band everyone wants. <laughs> mm. So, Joe, give me something. All right, it, this is going to be um, a little controversial. I'm going to bring up the Dave Ellison scandal. Go ahead. Mm. Uh, all right, I, you know, I, I guess it's just showing my age. Like, I I get it. People are pieces of shit call him out on it, but I really, what did he do wrong? It was, the girl wasn't on their age. All right, yeah, granted, he was cheating on his wife, but you know how many musicians, rock stars, whatever you want to call them, cheated on their wife? Like, or their significant other, not even just wives, it goes the other way. Uh, yeah, and I'm gonna bring it. It's it starts stupid. getting our And I'm gonna really, I'm gonna chalk it up to Dave Mustaine being the biggest piece of shit born ever <laughs> in the existence of humanity. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I know I went uh, in part one. I, I got into it. I mean, if you want to hear the story, I got a Dave. I got a Dave Mustaine story about why <laughs> I was a huge piece of shit. You want to hear it? Sure. Yeah, go ahead. I didn't make it uh, last time. Yeah, you, you, gotta pretend, <laughs> you guys gotta pretend like this is the first time you're hearing it. That's on the, so I used the floor. <laughs> I used to work at the Paramount and uh, Megan had played there a couple of times. And um, the second time they played, and the first time he was, you know, kind of kept it low key. The second time he played, he was just the biggest piece of shit ever. Like he, um, uh, you guys familiar with Kashi in Huntington? It's like a, I'm not a sushi guy, but it's like a known sushi spot. Like everybody on the island loves it, whatever, blah, 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 blah. So he's, he orders a bunch of sushi. He takes one bite of one piece and he's like, um, this isn't real crab. Like, yes, it is. We eat there all the time. It's not just whatever. So he already turned people off from that. And then so I'm working spotlight for him. And, uh, you know, I'm on I'm on a headset with their lighting director. I have to basically follow all the lighting director's rules. And as much as it's this guy's the LD's fault for why I hate him. I want to blame Dave Mustaine, Dave Mustaine, Dave Mustaine, just because he's a fucking piece of shit. Um, so they're in the middle of their set, and uh, <clears throat> he's like talking to the crowd. And he's kind of shielding his eyes, and like you know, I'm no, I'm no ex, I'm no pro spotlight guy, but that's usually kind of the sign to like bring down the heat on the lamp to, to stop blasting this dude in the face. So I say to the lighting director, "Hey man, like." Should I bring should I bring the intensity down a little bit? You know, he's, he's, I don't want to blind the guys. Like, no, if you do that, then you know I'm gonna get in trouble and, and, and whatever. So as the second he says that, I hear, you think Mr. Spotlight guy would take the hint that I'm shielding my eyes and to lower the lamp? I'm like, okay. And he's like, well, you heard him. And then so I lower it, and he's like, see, he didn't need hooked on phonics for that. I'm like, wait, what did he say? Because I didn't really hear him right away. Was a crowd was a crowd clapping and, and being like, yeah, Dave. Like, yeah, <laughs> Dave. Like, yeah. 1,500 people staring at me like I'm the dick. Like, meanwhile, I just said to the guy, like, yo. So, of course, I get blamed. But the funny part is, for the rest of the set, like, 
RLD was like shook, like I'm about to lose my job, kind of shook. Yeah, and then at the end of the night, homeboy, <clears throat> uh, his bus was parked in the back, so he it, he held up he held he held up our loadout for an hour and a half because he wanted a may he may or may not, I don't want to get you guys sued. He may or may not have wanted to sit and smoke pot in the dressing room, and uh, just fucking ruined everyone's night. He's a piece of shit. But yeah, I, I hey. totally don't agree. I, I, maybe I'm just yeah, maybe yeah. it's age, like I don't I was, get cancer culture. But I don't really think he did. Uh, besides cheating on his wife, yes, the girl was of age. It was consenting. You know, it, she didn't even leak the, the the video. Apparently, it was like a jealous ex boyfriend or a jealous. I forgot the the, the, the specifics, but. Yeah, Dave Mustaine, fuck him. I want to go back in time and watch Metallica kick him out and put a fucking cranberry cranberry pie right in his face. Nah. This was uh this was our five minute commercial to get uh Dave Ellison on the show. I hope you guys enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. so, Why not? Dave, we need you. Um cool. All right, well, Langan. Um, all right, I'm gonna go with probably my favorite album this year, Perturbator, uh, who's the first synthwave act I probably ever got into. Um, his new album, he continues evolving. It's um, he started out uh, what I liked about synthwave and that whole thing. It always sounded like a soundtrack to an '80s movie, sci-fi or horror movie that didn't exist. And he was right up my alley with that. But this album is more of a post-punk, like a Joy Division, Cure, Depeche Mode kind of. Uh, Parker's out. <laughs> it's I, believe like, it or not, though, I do dig it. I do dig this album. It's definitely different. From, it's like the Sisters of Mercy album that never happened after Vision thing, like if they continued that way. Um, <laughs> I, 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 he's always got an... He always had an element of rock in with his stuff, and uh, I like that he kind of straddles both camp. But it, 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 he continues to progress, and I think he's the best in the genre. And um, I just want to piggyback on that because just two similar acts wow. too. If you if you do like the Perturbator album, um, Conga, you and I will never die. It was an LA electronic act who into like it's more like EBM uh frontline assembly early ministry that kind of stuff and the bleak engineers uh album unconscious who's a duo from Russia dark wave synth wave depeche mode kind of style so bleak engineers perturbator and conga if uh that's your cup of tea that's right all right well shout out to that um I'm going to mention the blacklist which is the metallica 53 song um, so it's basically, uh, 53 artists decided to cover, uh, I guess the 12 songs on the black album. Um, uh, yeah. there's a whole bunch of doubles, uh, looking through here. Ghost does enter Sandman. Weezer does enter Sandman. Uh, Jason Isbell does sad, but true. Uh, what else? Is that is out? Like, I think they're, they're dropping it individually because some, some of the singles have been coming out. Like, Idols is on here. Idols is doing The God That Failed. To me, that is one of the best songs. Like, The God That Failed is, is one of my favorite songs off the Black album. Um, but there's a lot. Like, Darius Rucker is doing Nothing Else Matters. Nice. Um, Booty. <laughs> there's a lot of really interesting stuff, like Phoebe Bridgers. Um, I don't know. I like the idea. I, I think it, 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 um, I don't know whose idea it was. Um, and I've already heard some very terrible versions of these songs. Um, Snoop Dogg, uh, Sad But True from the, yeah. that's the worst I've ever heard. Um, I haven't heard, it's not on there, obviously. I haven't heard the Flatbush Zombies, uh, they're doing the Unforgiven. Um, so like just really cool. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, Here's a band that basically could do whatever they want. I mean, they, they have their own label. They have their own everything. Um, they, they have their own record press. Like Metallica is like just this big giant that could do whatever the fuck they want. So, um, you know, whether or not you, you like the songs or not, I think it's a really interesting move that I wanted to share. So, uh, Parker, give me something. So I just watched this on Stars and it's probably on Tubi and everything else, but I remember seeing this poster when I was a kid in like mom and pop video stores and I just never watched it. So I finally gave it, gave it in and watched it. And wow, I wish I didn't watch it, man, because it was kind of a fucking piece of shit. So return to Salem's lot. I'm sure half of you fucking guys have seen this fucking movie. 
So I should have known watching like the trailer once I saw Larry Cohen was involved. I'm like, oh man, this is this probably ain't going to be that great. But the uh, positive was it had the main guy from the stuff. I love the stuff. So that had a few, you know, a few points right there. But uh, all in all, it was not good. I was waiting for, uh, I was waiting for the vampire from the fucking poster, you know, to finally come out. But he never did. Half of the vampires didn't even have fucking fangs, which kind of sucked. They're fucking sucking blood out of cows, which is fucking stupid. And I don't know, man. This fucking this this was not a good movie. So thumbs down. <laughs> Shout out to that movie. I, I it's been a, a long time since I seen it. I just remember it being universally panned. So I will never watch it again. So yeah. and, and shout out to Michael Moriarty, who there you go. Was, is, you yeah. know, because he was in the stuff, which was also Larry Cohen. So, uh, Joe, yep. give me some. Um, I'm gonna go with Chappelle singing Radiohead. Yeah, at MSG with the Foo Fighters. Yeah, awesome. Like it was sick, but like it got me thinking. Like you think you think Chappelle celebrates Radiohead's whole, whole catalog? Like you think he like sits back, lights a dube, and like puts on Kid A and like just vibes? I think oh. I, I think uh, I think that's the only yeah. song he knows. <laughs> Great. <Definitely. point. laughs> you know, think he's fucking with King King of Limbs. Uh. Um, <laughs> But yeah, great, great pick too. Like, you know, the Foo Fighters are one of those bands that kind of could do whatever they want. And so is Dave Chappelle. So to see them both together doing that. And uh, I feel like now I've heard the song Creep like on Sirius randomly way more than I've ever, you know, I feel like people just something like that will shift the universe into being like, oh, shit, I remember this song. And now everyone's listening to old Radiohead. And now people are probably going to be angry because they're going to be like, oh, shit. Yeah, this band was awesome. What the fuck happened to them? So maybe maybe, maybe this will start the petition to, uh, you know, make them throw their synthesizers away because I'm sick of hearing it. So. Um, Alangan, uh, got a shout out. Uh, last drive in with Joe Bob Briggs on Shutter. Uh, so good, always crushing it. Uh, um, I think this last season just wrapped uh, like a week or two ago, right? But yeah, um, yep. But if you haven't seen it, um, the Maniac Cop One and Maniac Cop Two mm. episodes with uh, Bill Lustig and Bruce Campbell are two of the best I've ever seen great stories those are two of the most charismatic guys in horror um it, it it's it's a great double feature a lot of info i didn't know a lot of things to look for if you're a fan of these those the maniac cop uh, series especially those two films and and arguably maniac cop 2 is one of the best sequels of all time um sure is. and also uh his evil speak episode with clint howard was really good as well and uh he's just crushing it i, I love the last drive-in crushing it i i i, I uh man I, I can't say enough about the show and and uh you know if shutter was primarily that show it would be worth the five dollars a month it's almost what i use it for I like i mean i watch other stuff on there but that that's my go-to and I love the whole, th- I mean, I mean, having the host and there's a nostalgic feeling to that. And Friday night when it comes on live and you can, you know, there's something cool about that, you know? Yeah, because Darcy loves- Kind of brings you back to the days of Run the Shears. Yeah. yeah. And Gilbert Godfrey. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and instead of this commercial break, which, you know, uh, obviously some some movies have, if you're watching it on whatever the fuck, um, you have just this, 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 you know, it's like 20 minutes. And then from there, Joe Bob just gives you knowledge. Like he just drops it's, gems on you. Like you're it's like, like a director commentary without yeah. somebody talking over the picture. Just a break, a little, some factoids, some cool things to look for, some background on oh, the actors or directors so or certain scenes. It's it's great. It's awesome. And so this episode has crushed it. I'm gonna do one off a of shutter right now. Then, so I'm gonna do Vicious Fun, which is a newer movie. It just came out. Um, you want to talk about uh, an '80s synth fucking vibe? Mm-hmm. This has it um it's so good it was a lot of fun i had no idea what to expect it's this 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 kid who's a movie critic uh and he's a big horror fan and takes place in the 80s and he just happens to stumble onto this uh self-help uh group and he thinks it's aa or na but what it really is 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 these uh people who are uh serial killers and they're it's like a support group for them you know, talking about what it's like to be a serial killer. And uh, he stumbles across this and it's it's got a lot of heart. Uh, great characters. Dave Koch, Koch now or whatever, like, you know, the the 
the the bald dude from fucking um Anchorman oh, Cheap and, Thrills. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. That dude. Yeah. Yes, uh, he's great. Very, very good. Vicious fun. I already watched it twice. Super, super good. Great soundtrack. So uh Parker. Uh also on Shutter. So I was obviously waiting for this. Uh Romero's last movie, The Amusement Park. So I was like counting the days, the minutes for this thing to come out. And uh, I dug it. I mean, it, it, it looks really old. I mean, it is an old movie. What do you want? Yeah. But, uh, you know, it was cool because I figured, you know, like most Romero movies, I was going to know like every actor. Like I was waiting for like Samini to come out or like, you know, some guys have played zombies. But the only guy that I really, um, you know, noticed was the lead actor. He played the priest from Martin, Romero's movie, Martin. And that's the only guy that I could spot. But uh, Ramiro actually has a cameo in it, like he does, you know, in some of his movies. And funny enough, they actually, there's a dinner scene where uh, where the soundtrack is actually a song from Dawn of the Dead. It's pretty funny, like kind of like during the dinner scene. But uh, I thought this was better than Diary and Survival put together, because I think both of those are fucking pieces of shit. <laughs> and, and I think like 50 minutes or something, quick watch too. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, it's from 1972, so it definitely feels that 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 vibe for sure. Yeah. Um, all right, so winding down uh, the last few, uh, Sullivan, give me. Um, I'm gonna go a couple. I was gonna go Mean Man. I was gonna go Fear Street. Uh, a fun tidbit on Mean Man before I jump into it. I posted the other day on Facebook. So apparently, Blackie Lawless filled in for Johnny Thunders on a tour with the New York Dolls, which I never knew. Yeah. And he was also. He's also slated to play the T2. Uh, I'm sorry, in T2, Terminator 2, which would have been a completely different movie. Was he playing Danny Cooksey's part? <laughs> <laughs> he had the mullet. <laughs> um, he, need, he needed to dye it red. Yeah, they, he, they didn't let him wear the cod piece. It was a deal breaker. Mm. I'm not doing it without the chains to <laughs> between my legs. Lo and behold, he doesn't fuck like a beast. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go with like a kind of a forgotten gem, Parker. I'm sure it's in uh, category B. Uh, this movie called Black Circle Boys. It's a very '90s, not really a horror, more like a thriller. It's loosely based around the Ricky Queso case, um, without giving too many spoilers away. Uh, granted, like I said, it's a very '90s movie. Some people hate it, some people love it. It's definitely worth watching for that alone. Uh, it's like for uh, Three kids in Seattle, uh, Seattle area love, or four kids love metal. Um, one of them's kind of a schlep, like one of them's like kind of like the anti-hero. But uh, it's definitely worth checking out. Donnie Wahlberg was in it, I guess, in a low point God after damn. New Kids on the what, yeah. What'd you watch this on? Uh, it, I originally it was on Prime. You can find it on uh, YouTube now. Okay. Um, definitely a solid movie. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, I, I loved it. I, I saw it back in the day, and like I loved it. And, like every so every couple of years, I'll revisit. I just watched it again. That's why I brought it up. I just watched it again a couple of weeks ago. Shout um, out! Shout out to Northport. Shout out to Ricky Queso. Shout out to Ricky Queso. Yes, yeah, he changed. But yeah, if you're if you're a fan of that, wait, speaking of, did any of you guys see the documentary that came out a couple of years ago? I can't find it anywhere. It was on Prime for like. 10 bucks to rent or something crazy for like a couple of weeks, but I can't find it anywhere. It was like a documentary maybe two, three years ago made on the Rick Queso case. No. Yeah. Uh -huh. I read the book, the Say You Love Satan book I got from the library, which I had to order. I think um, I had the special order at Northport had a copy, but they wouldn't lend it out. I had to get special, like certain, if, if there's like local lore, like something that happened, like people would take the book out and never bring it back so much. Yeah, so I had, to, they had to order it specially because I wanted to read it in a lot of libraries. Sure, matter, but... sure I'll bring this back tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, cool, man. I wasn't Langan? buying it. <laughs> um, Langdon, as Antonio well, would say. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we haven't had any hip hop on here, so I got to shout out. I know the last episode we did the catch up, uh, Sam mentioned. Uh, Benny the Butcher's Plugs I Met uh, 2, I think. Yeah. And uh, the Trust the Sopranos album yep. that came out. Uh, I love that whole crew is just crushing it. 
year after year right now. They might be like the hottest crew out there for me anyway, personally. Uh, the production's amazing. That's what I'm all about. Like he's a, he's a good, great MC. Don't get me wrong, but the production that that crew utilizes is what grabs me. It's, it's yeah, uh, it's, it's different. It's, it's music to our ears, and it's the funny thing about them is I mentioned it before. It's it's goon music for so for it to be so popular, it's funny because it's just it, there's nothing really pop about it, you know. Mm. There's nothing really pop about it. Right. The only it's the music behind it isn't as goon ish. I would say like it's got you know a lot of it remind and it, it's probably from the covers that they use with the Scarface like imagery and stuff. That kind of synth that 80 synth and stuff like that, which I'm a sucker for, but just interesting production uh, as well as the big ghost and Conway album. If it, if it bleeds, it yeah, can yeah. be killed also. So killer. good. Um, all right. So I'm going to do, I'm going to mention anthrax 40, just that series, the, the web series. Mm. Um, I don't know uh, if anyone else is caught up, but I watch all 22 episodes. And wow. I mean, when, when it comes to, it's basically kind of like a, you know, their discography and their life. So it's it's a long, obviously, forty year career. So there's going to be a lot of episodes right now. I think we just finished up the John Bush era, so we're going to go back to the Joey Belladonna era on the next episode. And it's been such a goddamn treat to watch. It's been really cool to catch up on these stories. Um, just a lot of history. Uh, I, I can't recommend it more. It's not just on YouTube. Like you just go up and and you can watch all 22 episodes right now. And I think somewhere along the end they'll they'll put it out as like this one piece. But for right now, you could just watch bits and pieces. Um, Is there an episode on the singer in between Bush and Belladonna that was in the band for like four days? No, but that mention? dude that dude, <laughs> that dude does play. He used to play Beeries a lot. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Dan Nelson, I think his name is. Yes, that was it. Yep. I think I have mutual friends with him. I never met him, but I heard he's pretty cool. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, but okay, yeah. Anthrax forty for me. So uh, Parker, anything else? Uh, yeah, uh, Shutter again. Uh, another movie that I always wanted to see because I saw the poster, but this one was actually good. It was called The Monster Club. Uh, from 1981, very Tales from the Crypt, you know, separate stories, uh, very Hammer-esque, which was really cool, very dark and rainy, and that whole, you know, um, scene from back then, but it's got Donald Pleasance, it's got Vincent Price, it was, I think it was three or four different stories, and I really dug it, it was on Shudder. Yeah, man, Shudder's been crushing it, you know, they just recently, like, the it's nice it's not about so much um that i've never seen these movies but it's fun to just scroll through stuff and be like oh i could watch creep show i could watch manhunter i could watch near dark right now you know it's just it's just the accessibility of just being able to press the button mix in with some new stuff so uh joe anything um i'm gonna go with uh uh slipknot announced that they're doing a a paul gray tribute that was the basis that passed away uh he was he played in Reggie. We got a chance to tour with him. Um, super, super nice guy. Super fucking humble. Super down to earth. Uh, very giving. Very real. Uh, very, um, very real. Like he was a very real person. Um, struggled with his demons, which is sad. That's what took took his life. Uh, yeah, they announced they're doing a song. I think that's it's long overdue. He was like, uh, he was like the backbone to that band. He kind of kept everybody like getting along he was like the in-between guy he was the peacemaker uh from what i from what i was told um more than more than more than well appreciated by real slipknot i'm like a casual slipknot fan you know like i'm not i, I don't have every right i don't celebrate the whole catalog uh you, but, don't, you, know, have, the, you don't have the the clown mask nah. <laughs> the early records are great and uh i think it's uh yeah i think it's long overdue they wrote a tribute for him um <clears throat> I got some I got some great stories that I really can't say on here about him, but yeah, yeah, we'll get it for maybe one day. One day, we'll we'll save it for the book. But uh, that's yeah, for man, the pa- that's for the Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to pay to hear that shit. But uh, yeah, I mean, I anytime I've seen Slipknot, it's been like a festival type thing, and uh, they're you know I'm not like the biggest like I I just don't know the music that well but anytime I casually just happen to watch them I'm like these guys are really good they know (laughs) how to put on a show man yeah yeah yeah. it it was like pure K I saw them at Tattoo the Earth and I was like wow I'm like this is like this band's like Kiss but better yeah yeah. (laughs) I I got does it get any better than Kiss it doesn't (laughs) all the time 
Did anyone have the Kiss A and E documentary or not? No, I saw it. I, 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 I saw it. It's it's really good. Um, it's just it's fun to watch, and they go through like uh, you know, they just it's the same thing. They go through all their albums and and like you know their personnel. Is it like uh, honest or is it like a fluff piece? Like, like I think a... I think for the most part it seems honest. Like they're yeah. you know like Gene is kind of self deprecating in a way, and they you know they admitted some of their mistakes, but I I don't think it's anything like uh, outrageous. Bas- basketball jersey, kiss. Yeah, right up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put the X and sex and tears are falling. Yeah, no, but uh, I like tears are falling. Nah, uh, <laughs> how do you do a kiss, a kiss documentary but not have Peter or Ace? Like, that's kind of I didn't want to, you knew whatever. they weren't gonna let them speak their mind, yeah, or Vinnie Vincent for that matter. Yeah. Vinnie Vin- yeah, they didn't want to do it, uh, according to whoever's putting it together, but it's probably because they, they were like, okay, if you want to be a part of this, you need to agree to these terms. And they were probably, like, I know that they did. I think they want, I read something, some blabbermouth trash or whatever, something headline or whatever. I think they were trying to get the, I think Peter Chris has the rights to Beth, I guess okay. that song. Yeah. It's got, he wrote it, sung it or whatever. And he wouldn't let them use it as like one last act of like, <laughs> yeah. <which laughs> right. I love yeah, that. I mean, they did make him seem like kind of a dick in, in like Peter Chris and in, in, yeah. in like the even like in the reunion, they were like, yeah, this dude was just such a like hard person to get along with. And I do kind sure. of enjoy the fact that Paul Stanley's turning into like uh, like he looks soul like, singer. He, no, he's turned like he looks like Cher. <laughs> he looks like Cher should look now if, if she didn't have plastic surgery. <laughs> but, uh, all right. Langan, anything? Um, let's see. A uh, documentary I saw on Prime, Dare to Be Different, which is a story of uh, WLIR. We're a Long Island based oh, yeah. podcast. And uh, right. uh, th- th- there's these, I-, I always love when there's these rare moments in history where something cool comes on, <laughs> comes out of Long Island that the city is actually jealous of that's doing it right. And like LIR was one of them. Like they were the better radio station for alternative. They broke bands. They did stuff like that, that Manhattan stations were doing at the time, you know, and it's so rare that it happens in history. Maybe this radio station and, uh, and that club caffeine. Yeah. That was the only other time I remember people coming from the city to go out and party out there. <laughs> people come so, here for, for our Billy Joel too. And maybe the oysters. Oh Christ. Yeah. That. That too. Shout out to Down Easter Alexa. <laughs> um, all right, so th- this is Sam. This is a this is a document a docu series made by Banger Films. Shout out to Sam Dunn uh, and his crew. I mean, these guys tackled the headbanger journey, like where they broke down like the the that show was genre, awesome. right. So then right. they go they go into nope. hip hop evolution. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing, very thorough. They go to like, ge- like the geography of it all, and now they're like, "Hey, fuck it, let's do pop." So when I first started watching it, I'm like, "Okay, whatever." It starts with Boys to Men and like the boy group, and I'm like, "That was entertaining." Then the next thing is Auto Tune, and then the thing after that is like um, pop country, Brit pop, and I'm like, "Yo, this is really good." Like they're getting it, like the Swedish uh, songwriters. Then they get into like the history of music festivals because it, it the episode is like the power of a song and how uh, uh, t- 200,000 people scream in the same song, how that makes you feel euphoric. Man, what a great, great web se- uh, docu-series on uh, Netflix at the moment. It's called This Is Pop. Man, if you're a fan of music on any level, this shit is like, I mean, like you could, you could smoke this shit, pure. <laughs> Pure. So, uh, all right, Parker, anything? Uh, Fargo season four with Chris Rock. Uh, dug it. Probably my favorite season out of all four of them. Um, if you do like the movie, I'm a fan of the movie. Probably the first season is the closest to it. Yep. This was, uh, but th- this was great. I mean, he said that he was such a fan of the show. He didn't want to be on the show because he was worried that it was going to ruin it. He said the same thing for Sopranos. But uh, this was great. I mean, it takes place in like the 50s and uh, I fucking loved it. I mean, every episode it kind of is its own thing, but this is by far my favorite one out of all four. Yeah, I got to get up on that. I love the first season. The first season was really good. I had no idea, but it is the closest to, to the actual movie, yeah. whatever, whatever those events were. And then from there, they, they took a, 
a left turn, but I mean, people really love Fargo and uh, it seems to be like just contained seasons, which is, is fun. You know, you watch it and if it's not for you, then you go on to the second. So, uh, but the writing seems to be amazing. So uh, Joe, anything else? Um, I'm going to go there's, um, this band called Bitchcraft. Uh, West yeah, I, Bitch. I love that. But, I love that Bitch. Yeah. Right. Uh, there's actually two bands. One's like a stoner metal kind of de- deal and they're not bad, but the one I'm like, I was psyched on that besides Golden, besides Golden Casket, I've been listening to this record, Blessed Bitch. Uh, there's really not a lot of info on these on the on, on this band. Um, I know they're from Europe. Uh, it's kind of like a bikini kill meets like a gothy, maybe like a Christian death, 45 grave kind of deal. Uh, but like a more modern take on it, Parker's done. He doesn't want to hear any of it. Oh, yeah. forget that. Yeah, I'm <laughs> yeah. out of here. <laughs> He's waiting for the floor yeah. punch. Yeah. Definitely. yeah, Parker's more psyched on the Bane reunion. But um, it, I'm ready. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, definitely worth definitely worth checking out. Um, got bitch a little crap. bit of a kind of vibe. It's definitely yeah, bitch crap, less bitch. Um, definitely worth keeping on the Spotify. They have other records too. They have a a, a newer record that just came out recently, but I haven't heard it yet. Cool. All right. Yeah. Uh, Langan, anything? Um. I guess real quick, uh, Parker just mentioned The Sopranos, the uh, the Many the tra- Saints of the trailer. Uh, Newark trailer came yeah. out, and uh, I'm so, totally, so. totally psyched. Because last year I spent watch rewatching the entire series for like I don't know how many times, and reestablishing itself as one of the best of all time. Tony Soprano, one of the best characters of all time. James Gandolfini, one of the best performances of all time. But you know the deal. Um, and obviously the trailer's got his son playing him. You see a couple of little mannerisms that are similar. Um, but it looks like it's, it, it's going to uh, focus more. I, I think Dickie Mol- Moltisanti, uh, Christopher's father, is going to be like the main crux of it, I think. Yeah. You know, more than just like origin stories of all the characters or something like that. But um, and uh, Vera, Vera, F- what's her name? Farmiga. Uh, yes, who's fantastic playing. I, I can't wait to see her play Olivia. And uh, I'm excited. I can't wait for it. Yeah, I'm, I, I love the trailer. I just hope they don't spend a lot of time uh, in his high school years because I don't want to see that. I want to see like, yeah, I don't want to see him like uh you know, ditch school and play football. Like I, I want to see uh, crime. I want to see murder. I want to see arson. I want to see all that good stuff. Yeah, I could see them not being so much like just focusing on him. Like they're showing a lot of him in the trailer, but I could see it more focusing on, you know, Johnny Boy and all that kind of stuff. You know, I don't know what direction they're going to take, but uh, either way, I'm, I'm excited. Amen. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to mention a show on FXX, uh, Dave. So second season came out, um, you know, the first season really like blew me away. It's a little Dicky show and it, it's kind of like the curb your enthusiasm version of his life. Um, I can't like, it's, it's just, it's so good. It's so well-written. It's just, he's, he's a rapper and it's just basically his life uh, in the second season. He's making an album and all that other shit. Um, his real life uh, hype man is in it with him. Uh, Andrew Santino is plays his manager. And it's just it's basically just it really is like a curb your enthusiasm with Lil Dicky. And if you don't know Lil Dicky, just he's kind of like he's he's very good. He's a real actual rapper. He has skill. Uh, great ear for for melody and music um he just does a lot of like jokey songs kind of um but they're not like you know too ridiculous like uh uh normally but man just a really funny show if you're looking for th- 30 minutes to kill it's up on hulu very very good even if you don't like hip-hop it's it's just one of those things that's just very well written very funny so huge thumbs up on dave so let's do the last one parker give me get, uh, give me whatever you got left I'm going to end mine with another Shutter movie called VFW from a couple of years ago. Wow. Um, great movie, very grindhouse looking, glorious hell, great soundtrack. Uh, I mean, the cast, Martin Cole, William Sadler, and a oh boy, fucking Stephen Lang for fucking, there you go, fucking right there, fucking band in a hand. So, right. you know, yeah. got out the band in a hand. But, uh, <laughs> he was great in this. I'm excited that they just announced uh they're bringing him back for what was that movie? Don't breathe. I think the sequel's coming out now that he was in, so I'm excited for that. The the original, the first one was great. So, 
Yeah, I love VFW. Joe Bigos, I mean, I, I wanted to reach out to him, maybe do an episode, because he also did a movie called Bliss, which I thought was fucking mind-numbingly good. Like, But those those are great. And if you like VFW, Vicious Fun is kind of like in that vein. You you could even see like that movie poster has similarities. Uh, so, Joe, give me your last one. Uh, I'm going to go with um, the Extinction AD web series they're doing. Nice. Rick. Uh, it's, I think it's called It's Go Time, You Asshole. It's yep. two episodes nah. so far. And it's just them guzzling energy drinks and talking shit, which is, I mean, besides energy drinks, I'm a big fan of talking shit. <laughs> it just shows, like, the chemistry between the band. And, uh, I, I mean, personally, well, they're one of the better Long Island bands out right now. So uh, good. They're playing H. Next one? Yeah, August? Yep, yep, yep. I forget. I don't know the actual date. I'm going to try and make it down. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely worth. If you know Rick and you know his sense of humor, it's like totally spot on. Like very, uh, very energy, very Red Bull uh, infused uh, shits and gigs. When I when I see Rick com- Rick Jimenez shout out uh, comment on uh, when I get a notifi- notification with his name, I know the comment's gonna be good. Oh, yeah, 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 like I know it's gonna be outrageously ridiculous. And you know, uh, some, somebody something that somebody captured and killed Osama bin Laden. Yeah. 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 No, but like I, I was like we talking about, I was talking about like a uh, vocal warm ups, and he was like, "What helps me is stealing somebody's lunch money, then doing like ten push ups and doing it all while being under five foot helps me." Is what it, like I, he just like wrote this long ass comment, and I was just like, "That's it's just so ridiculous." But it like I just picture him writing, it and I laugh. So, uh, Langan, last uh, one. I'll just uh, mention three things I didn't mention real quick. Uh, as far as hip hop goes, Vinny Paz back again, burn everything that bears your name. If you like Pazzy, you like goon music, yep. goon hip hop, It's he's doing what he does. Uh, that, a doom metal album, which normally I'm not a fan of, nor parody kind of bands, but Dr. Colossus, I'm a stupid moron with an ugly face and a big butt and my butt smells and I like to kiss my own butt, which if wow. you're a Simpsons fan. Wow, that's a title, man. There is, it's a Simpsons thing. Bart Simpson says it in an episode. All their song titles are based on Simpsons references, but they're better than that stupid Flanders band. This is like a legit band that just took that angle. But yeah. I don't like Doom, but I like this. It was good. And lastly, uh, Zombie Liquid Crystal uh, kind of album EP. Parker, yes, you nice. mentioned them before. Yep. Uh, if you like the old kind of soundtracks from zombie mo- the Romero zombie movies, I always thought they kind of uh, borrowed a lot from that. And uh, this doesn't disappoint. It's killer. Cool. Yeah. Um, all right. So, yeah, I'll, I'll just mention a, c- a couple of things real in closing. Uh, the Woodstock 99 trailer looks amazing. That yes. comes out July 23rd on HBO Max. Uh, complete shit show. Can't wait to watch it. It just seems like the OG fire festival. Uh, <laughs> Did you go to that, Sam? No, I was uh, too busy in rehab. I, w- I was I was in rehab from like '98 to 2000. So uh, I, I was, uh, you know, I was getting my institution on for like 2.5 years. Uh, Tarantino on Rogan was fucking great because Rogan did not ruin it. Rogan did not shift the conversation to like hunting or like um, uh, something random. Like he, like Tarantino talked about his career in movies for three hours. And it's absolutely fantastic. Um, then there's three the movies. The Marin episode was good too. Yeah, a little shorter. Uh, yeah, definitely then, different the, episodes. Yeah. The Weren't three- they trying to cancel Tarantino too recently? Like someone Uma Thurman and her getting injured on a shoot, Kill Bill, or some bullshit. He's yeah, uncancelable. Yeah. He can't be canceled. Oh, no, yeah. he's okay. no Beyond. one. Yeah, the only people you know when it comes to canceling, it's only people who aren't a fan of. Like no one's gonna can like. What could anyone do like to like the shit that we like? Like no one if you're not a fan of someone, it's easy to be like, I'm never watching a Tarantino movie again. It's like, well, you don't watch it to begin with. Like you're not you can't cancel fans unless you're like 12 and get offended by everything. Exactly. Um, they tried canceling Howard Stern like during like the, the presidential. I guess you can't he was anti-Trump. Yeah, you can't cancel Howard. You can't but, because uh, it's like you're telling me like his fans know what he did 10 yeah. 15 years ago like yeah. uh howard did blackface like yeah so what like yeah. everyone know like it's only the person who who oh, like it's so stupid i don't even want to mm-hmm. talk about it yep. but uh um, last three things in the earth which was a new ben wheatley movie was a fucking trip 
really it's like the happening meets like mandy very fucking bizarre i saw it in the theaters really crazy and then there's two movies that are on uh shutter that are absolutely ridiculous one is called the dark and the wicked which is one of the best horror movies i've seen over the last 20 years it, it's, it's nice brutal it's effective it's dark the dark and the wicked um it's an actual horror movie like it's really oh, hard yeah so brian bertino who made the strangers made it uh and then there's a movie that's really dark called violation which is also on shutter uh and it was the first time i saw like an erect penis in a movie and it's fucking weird like it's it's yeah. like this dude with like a boner like it's a dude with a boner and it, it's like it's just this weird like kind of like rape scene and uh mm. torture and he has it's a guy with a boner i couldn't believe it because usually when you see a boner at least you get like a tit or like pussy and in, like you're watching porn basically this is just a boner i was just like where's the rest of this scene <laughs> uh but it's it's a very dark movie uh very heavy uh very trippy and um you know if, if you want to watch something that's very out of the ordinary violation is, is one of those so come for cool. the boner stay for the horror yeah <laughs> uh, i'm glad we finally got this in i like to do yeah, it every now and then. thanks for having me guys no doubt joe thanks for doing it thanks for uh, hanging out with us and uh i will yeah, put man, this always, always a pleasure Later, I will, guys. I will put this out tomorrow morning. Cool. Guys, Peace. later. Later. All right. All right. Thanks. Hey. You don't remember me? Nah. I'm the fucking man of your dreams, ma. <laughs> Look, you smiling, so you obligated to turn back around. Come over here. Oh, you don't got a minute? That's cool. I got two. You can have one of mine. Yo, honey, dip, summertime, fine, she'll be dripping. Our first date course the same as the Supreme Pippins. Had to take her out, show her how I'm living. Yep. Started riffing when I asked, can I put the tip in? Ha. Stop tripping, girl, I'm only kidding. Yep. Want to see the finer things, I'll give you the vision. Look. Add to the equation and there won't be no division. You could tattoo any of mess across your chicken. Yep. Single mothers love me because I body kids mad toys. Yep. You see my girl, I'm an inspiration of fat boys. Yeah, you two could get a chick like this. If you sharp with your wordplay, it's just like Rick. You, know, you could get like this if you hit strike quick. And yeah, I'm the shit like the kids like this. Uh, we could be lifers. Call me when your man gone. I'll be walking through the mud. Just slide out that tampon. You got what I want It's really what I need And I think for your love Got to have it like a fiend Not the only one But I'm the one that's real Come through anytime Show you how you make me feel I'm politicking with this chicken Wondering if I'm a creep Dark Satellite